walkthrough is going to be using a sled, a camera sled, rather than the walkthrough functionality that was added, as I mentioned earlier. Once again, I'm going to need to create a motion study, but I'm going to use this path here that I'm showing you to add the camera sled first. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a component. And I've already got this created. This could be absolutely anything. So I'm going to use something that looks like a camera, a camcorder, but it could be as simple as a block or it could be a fully modeled anything. Um, so anything could be a camera sled. I'm going to place it at the end of this line and I'm going to use some mates actually to position it for real. Um, these are going to be four position only mates though. That's pretty important because I want to be able to move it and I don't want to have to deal with mates. So I'm going to scroll down here to the bottom of the mates and use for positioning only. So everything I add is only temporary. It's just for initial placement. So I'll do a quick coincident and let's see, we'll do, um, try, oops, wrong one. Um, try this line. And notice I have added in some reference geometry. So I've got a couple of lines and that's gonna help me out in a couple of ways. That's gonna be useful, not only for this positioning, but also the camera itself once I add it to the sled. Okay, so now that I've got this in here, I'm ready to go ahead and create the motion study itself. And I'm gonna be moving this sled around before I even add any cameras in. Okay, so motion steady. And in the, the manual way of creating an animation is to basically you click on the amount of time you want it to take, so four seconds, and then you create the motion. And since I have auto keys turned on, it's gonna automatically record that. So I'm gonna use move component. And usually free drag is what's active, but you may not have even known that there are some other options within move component. So I'm gonna use a long entity, but you could do X, Y, Z axis, a um, couple of different, other, different things. So choose that line and I'm gonna grab it and just drag it. And notice as soon as I release my mouse button from dragging that, it's gonna add some key tracks down here for that component from zero to four seconds. At six seconds, I want it to have rotated around that curve. So once again, I'm gonna rotate, but this time about an entity. To choose the entity, so I have an axis already created as reference. Oh, okay, let me see if I can grab that. Zoom in a little bit. There we go. Okay, so it rotates about that axis and records the time. At eight seconds, I want to move along an entity once again. So choose the path and yep, eight, eight seconds and drag that along. Oh, once again, having a little bit of issue getting there. Okay. And then we'll repeat the process for a couple of other second timing. So 10 seconds, I want to rotate again, choose the entity to rotate about, zoom in on here and then just drag it around. So it's nice to have that in there just so that you have something to reference and you're not kind of flying blind. Zoom out a little bit for this last one, move along entity and choose that line. So give it a little extra time here. So a couple extra seconds. And let's take a look at what that did. So as you can see, my sled moves along that entity or those entities, I should say. So all I have to do now is add the camera to that so that you know we can see something other than a sled moving around a sketch. It'd be a lot more exciting. All right, so I need to go all the way back to zero now in order to add that. So I'll zoom out a little bit, and then when I'm adding my camera, in order to do so, I have to right click, but I'm gonna go all the way back to zero. Uh, right click on the lights and cameras folder and add a camera. So what you're seeing here, your screen gets split into two. So over here on the right side, that is just your regular assembly view. On your left side, that's what the camera is currently seeing. So I'm gonna zoom out on what the camera is currently seeing. You could zoom on either one of them. And you can kind of see the funny looking camera there. And I'm gonna use some 
target and selection points and some, some different options within here. So my tar target by selection, I'm going to use those reference lines that I added in there. So I want it to point at the end of my sled. So that's what that end point is going to represent. Position, that's where, basically where would my eye be? So it'd be at the back of the camera. So over here on the right now, you can see exactly what's going to be showing through the lens of that camera. And then roll by selection, that basically defines which end is up. So it kind of just squares it up in this case. Also, down here at the bottom, you can see that we have options for field of view. So field of view is defined by your view angle, um, distance from the target, and a couple of other things. You can also choose from standard. So I'm going to cho choose the 24 millimeter wide angle lens. And then just screen check, and that adds my camera. In order to see that though, I want to first, I'm going to enable the view key creation so that as I'm playing through, it's actually going to record this. And then I have to turn on the camera view by right clicking on that camera. So here's exactly what you're seeing. So you might notice there are a couple of lines in here. Um, that is actually the silhouette edges of my sled. So I could, and let's go ahead and do that. I'll scroll down here and right click and just hide that sled itself. So everything still works. The sled is just hidden. And while we're at it, I'll go ahead and hide my sketches and all that reference stuff that I used just so that it's a nice clean animation. And now let's, let's go ahead and play through this and see what happens. So as you can see, it's as if I'm walking around looking at these tanks and it's a nice fluid motion because of the reference geometry that I had in there and I use that in order to create the animation. So it's a good method to use, even though the new functionality is available, this is always a good go-to, like I said, especially if you have some specific constraints that you wanted to define. Um, it's pretty easy to do it this way as well. So keep that in mind. You might find it useful at some point.